This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Once again, we come to the subject of reality. Sometimes it's a little boring, or sometimes the colors in your subject just don't work for whatever you're trying to accomplish. This telephone booth, for example, is painted red and silver. That's not bad, it makes it very easy to identify. But I need to change the color red to another color. In a situation like this, the ability to replace colors in a specified area comes in very handy. The first thing you're going to want to do when you replace color is localize or limit the areas you're going to affect. And you do this with selections. You learned all about selections in another lesson. This is just going to be a really quick use of the polygonal lasso tool. The polygonal lasso makes straight line selections. I simply click at each point I want to have a straight line. And then when I get back to the original point I started from, I click on it and it completes the selection border. I can hold down shift and click on new areas. And this allows me to add areas to the selection. I really want to keep these lassos as tightly around the red parts of the telephone booth as possible. And these are the forward facing areas that I want to adjust. The tighter you make the selections, the less work the application has to do when it comes time to replace your colors. The less work the application has to do, the better. So I'll very quickly finish that last selection. And then it's enhance. Adjust color, replace color. The replace color dialog box has two different sections. The selection section controls the areas that you're going to replace, and the replacement section is your color replacement result. By default, both colors are the same, but if you click on the swatch in the replacement area right above the word result, it'll open the Adobe Color Picker. This allows you to select the target color. The target color is very easy to set. You can adjust the hue, the actual color you're looking for in the slider to the right. I want blue. And then you simply click in the large square area to choose the intensity and the brightness of the color. When you press OK, the colors are changed. And you'll notice that some of the colors are already beginning to change here even before we've actually chosen the selection. You set your selection color by activating the eyedropper and clicking on the color that you want to replace. When you want to add additional areas, you can choose the eyedropper plus and click on new areas to add. There are two places you can click, either directly on your artwork or in the thumbnail in the replace color field, like so. Either one works fine. If you hold down the command key, it'll turn the thumbnail into an actual photograph rather than the black and white image. When looking at the thumbnail, the black and white thumbnail, the white areas are the ones that you're going to correct. The black areas are the ones that are being left alone. Fuzziness controls how selective the tool is. If you reduce the fuzziness, the colors have to be very, very close in order to be affected. If you increase the fuzziness, it allows you to select a wider range of colors. Even though the thumbnail is showing you areas outside of the selection that are currently included in what it wants to replace, because you have the selection, only what's inside the selection can possibly be adjusted. That's the point of the selections. They limit the scope of what you can edit or what you can control. In a situation like this, the selections work really well because they allow you to adjust the fuzziness beyond the point that would be safe if you were adjusting the entire image simultaneously. So whenever possible, you're going to want to use selections to limit the scope of your enhancements if you don't want to make global image-wide changes. That works pretty well. It looks most of the image has been corrected. You can always use the minus eyedropper to subtract from the sample area. You can also click on the swatch next to color in the selection area in order to set a specific color value if you want to, but I prefer to use the eyedroppers and sample by eye. 
Not bad, pretty good. I'll press OK. I can deselect to remove the selection by pressing Command D on my keyboard. For our PC users, that would be Control D. Same keyboard shortcut. You can also select from the Select menu at top, Select, Deselect. That worked actually pretty well. You'll notice that even the highlight areas maintain their color variation, so it doesn't simply take the entire red area and just flatten it out as blue. So you do keep that highlight and shadow variation during your color replacement. It can be a very helpful technique, especially in a situation like this where you want to very subtly replace one color with another. If you want to, you can save the file. Remember to always save in a version set with your original so you don't replace the original file. Same options.